Hello everyone, True Zero Emissions here. Okay, um, today's video, this, this video is about Segway. Segway, great company. Okay, I like Segway so much. They make such great scooters. I sold all my scooters, I had 10 scooters. I sold all my scooters and I bought two. Two new scooters, which is the Segway GT2. That's a dream scooter to me. I, this is a dream come true. I can't believe I have the scooter. It's a Segway GT2. And I got the Wolf King GT Pro. These are two scooters that have what I'll call rock solid stability when riding them. They do not feel like they want to fall over or turn, right? When you ride a scooter, it feels like it wants to turn or fall over really easy. And a lot of people do. They fall over right away. Um, these two scooters are so stable. So we're going to talk about the Segway GT2 right now. And this is very important. Now I'm going to talk about all Segway products. This is very important what I'm going to say right now. Very important. Whether you're buying a new Segway scooter or any uh, Segway micro mobility, uh, any micro mobility from Segway, or whether you're going to sell something used, Okay, so this applies to buying new or selling your 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 scooter or your Segway uh, micro mobility, and it also applies to buying something that's Segway, buying a used Segway. Okay, this is very important. What I'm going to say right now, I've talked to Segway several times, and I've come to understand very clearly the importance of this. Now, does anyone have any idea what I might be ready to say right now? Imagine buying a scooter. Imagine buying a scooter. It's your dream scooter, right? Let's say you buy a used one. You got the great price that you wanted. You you were the first one to contact the person or or somehow you were able to to buy the scooter that you wanted used, right? You bought it used. So right now at the moment we're going to talk about used. If you buy used, now what do you absolutely need? What's necessary? What does Segway need? to help you with your with your new used scooter okay it's new to you but it's a used scooter right so you're not the original owner of it what does segway need do you have any idea original purchase receipt a copy of that it's needed you need this okay a friend of mine cameron purchased a scooter and there's a long story to that but i'm going to make the story very short cameron did not have a, a he had bills of sale, so we had like a, a bill of sale, everything from the original owner except the purchase receipt. Now, what's really frustrating about that is the, the person showed proof of original purchase like on their phone. They showed the transaction of that. Now, all that was needed was to take a picture of that or somehow have a copy of that, right? Just take a picture of that proof of purchase. And if you have that, that has the information that Segway needs. This is what I'm being told by Segway. I've spoken with them several times on this matter. And I'm hoping this video helps you, uh, help someone uh, in, with preventing this situation where you buy a Segway and you don't get the, the original receipt, proof of purchase, right? Uh, so it could be a, a copy of it. It could be a photo of it. It has to be just, it, it needs that information, all the information that's on the original receipt as it relates to the scooter and the person that bought it. Why? Why does Segway need that? Well, because that's how they, that's the way it works with Segway. See, this scooter will be registered. In, in, now, I may not be saying all this perfectly correctly, okay? But you can check with Segway yourself. But this, the way I'm going to say this is, and this is the way I understand it, and I could be not saying it perfectly perfect, so check for yourself. But I'm going to say it the way I understand it. This, the scooter, when you buy it new, like I bought this one new, right, a Segway GT2, this is in my name, right? It's, it's, it's registered to me, if I say it that way, right? It's not registered like a, like a car. It's just that the transaction between Segway and I, they have my name, my information. Now, if I sell this scooter to someone and I don't give them a copy of the receipt, if I don't give them a copy of the receipt, and then something breaks on the scooter, especially the motor controller, right? What if the motor controller goes out? That is something that for most people, unless you know how to program a controller and you can put an aftermarket controller in it and program it, right? 
unless you can do that, and I think most people would not do that, they would want to change the controller, right? So they'd want to put the original equipment in there, original, uh, buy the controller from Segway, which is wonderful. Segway has videos on everything on the scooters teaching you how to, I think it's called right to repair. Clearly, it, they support that, which is, they're showing you how to change the parts, how to work on your own scooter, which is wonderful because the infrastructure for scooter maintenance at this time right now, in 2023, there's not a lot of places that work on scooters, right? Um, there's a few places and that's wonderful, but not everyone has a scooter shop near them. So, but even the scooter shop would be limited in what they can do from what I understand, because on a Segway, okay, on a Segway product, and I'm talking about the GT2 right now, I'm gonna talk about my scooter, and the GT1 as well, because I had that one before, and now Cameron has that scooter. Um, <clears throat> and I had bought it used. That's the, the scooter we're talking about, I, I bought the scooter from, from the original owner, and then Cameron bought it from me. So we have the paper trail, but I didn't get a copy of the, of the bill of, I didn't get a copy of the receipt from the, from the uh, original owner. And they showed me proof of purchase. I just didn't know at that time the importance of that. And then later when I tried to connect with them, I was not able to. So now they're, the person's gone, right? Because they live in Europe. So they're gone and they're not responding to messages on the, on the app. Um, so what would have prevented all the problems that we're having, because right now Cameron's kind of locked out of his scooter. He can only go a very low speed and cannot use all the features of the, of the app. And, uh, and also can't use all the, the features of the speed, can't use uh, sport mode, can't use uh, race mode, things like that. It's stuck at going 15 miles an hour maximum, right? And that GT1 scooter goes around, I think, 37 miles per hour, which is really a good speed. It's nice. So the, all the troubles that, if you've been following these videos, all the troubles that Cameron's having um, can be, could have been prevented if we had gotten a, uh, a uh, a copy of the receipt okay so if you're gonna buy a a used scooter and it's from the original owner ask if you can if you may please have a copy of the receipt right you can take a picture of it with your phone uh, or if they can send you a copy like a physical pa paper copy whatever is convenient for you or or even both have I would if you can get both copies right <laughs> get a get a, a photocopy um, uh, I don't know if they can give you the original receipt and they keep a copy, you know, since you're buying the scooter from them. I don't know if that could be done. Um, <clears throat> but that's what Segway needs. So Segway is telling me, when I spoke with them, I spoke with them today again, um, Segway is telling me that, uh, and, and, and I'm referencing Cameron's scooter because my scooter is a Segway GT2 and I bought this brand new and it works fine. But Cameron's scooter, he's still locked out of it. Um, <clears throat> and Segway made it clear to me that if he had the receipt, original manuf uh, re receipt from the original owner, if he had the receipt, even if, if it wasn't Cameron that bought it, but he has the receipt from the person that did buy it, that's enough, okay? That's, that's needed. And that's what can help with this present situation that Cameron's in, that Cameron's facing right now and dealing with, and also anyone that wants to buy a used Segway scooter. I don't know about other scooters. Like for example, this one doesn't have an app that works with it. Uh, and aside from that, because this is aside from the app, even if the app was, was unlocked, let's say the apps, you know, everything's, at, let's say you have the app, uh, this is my understanding, let's say that you buy a used Segway GT1 or GT2, and the person signs out of the app, and then you sign in with your, your you use your phone to sign in, if you don't have a copy of the original receipt, you can still be limited your you can still be locked out of your scooter from having access to like the faster speeds that can still happen for example if you burn your motor controller out right because that that you'll need segways help on that unless you're changing it to an aftermarket one which at the moment i don't know how to do that but i can i'm willing to learn uh to help say to help uh cameron if needed if we need to change it uh but um i lost my train of thought anyway this is very important so is the the the, the, the important thing right now, what I'm trying to share with you and emphasize is that I hope if you can take one thing away from this video, if there's one message you remember, it's that when you buy a Segway scooter, which are great scooters, they're fantastic. I mean, look at the engineering of these things. Look at this. When do you see engineering like this? I mean, look at those tires. Segway was like the first company. I think they were the first company to come out with a self-sealing self-healing tire you ever heard all these words used for a tire where it's 
it says can't be punctured and all you can't get flats and then you still get flats right this tire self-sealing self-healing non-liquid there's no liquid in here so it's not messy isn't that wonderful i used to use liquids they would leak they would leak on the floor they then when i have to change the tire it was really really messy this is never messy like that this has a thick like a gel that doesn't dry but it's also not a liquid and it's in the tires segway did that first I, I think they were the first company or one of the first or the first and now everyone's doing it it's like an industry standard now uh, and people that buy their scooter that don't have that, they put those tires on right away or they put solid tires on. So that's a choice you have as well. The honeycomb, look at honeycomb tires because that has more uh, cushioning in it. Um, but going back to the message of this video, the, mes the one message I want to emphasize in this video is to get a copy of the receipt if possible, if possible. Now, if you buy a Segway, right, and you burn out the motor controller, okay, and you have to change it. Segway, on these scooters, on the GT1 and GT2, Segway has to help, and I'll call it program. They have to help it program it to the scooter, right? So you can't just put it in and then it work, right? It, that's not how it works. So when Segway's helping you, they're gonna see, they're gonna say, who's this? Who are you and who is this, who's this person that purchased the scooter originally? And they're gonna wanna know if you have that record, that documentation, right, of, of the original purchase. If you have that, you share that with Segway, and you'd have to ask them how they want that done. I'm guessing it's through email. And uh, and you're set. You're good. Th they'll help you. If not, you end up where Cameron is. Cameron has a Segway GT1. It goes 15 miles an hour max. He can't use sport. He can't use race mode. And, um, and we're looking at either parting out the GT1 at this moment in time, parting it out, taking it all apart and selling it for parts, or putting an aftermarket controller in there. If you buy a used Segway GT1 or GT2 and uh, you burn out the controller and you're gonna need Segway's help, if you don't have that original proof of purchase, now I know I'm repeating myself a lot, but I, uh, that, that's how I learn. I learn re repetition. And I like to, when I repeat it to you, it helps me also remember it. So I'm, I'm helping, I'm talking to myself and sharing my learning process with you <laughs> and I hope this helps you too <laughs> I really do hope this helps someone I really do I hope this video helps you uh, I didn't know this I didn't know that that was needed um, like for example on this scooter the Wolf King this is a different scooter Wolf King GT Pro now this one um, I don't think that would that would ever happen with this scooter at least right now and I don't I can't see that happening in the future where if I change the controller, I just change the controller. It's I can buy a controller and put it in. I don't think there's any special programming needed. Now I haven't done it, so I don't know 100% for sure for certain. But I know I've worked on other scooters where I've changed the controllers in different scooters, and I've never come across this unique situation, which I'm calling it unique. But maybe it's becoming more common now. Maybe it is more common. But but I know on the Segway, uh, when we asked Segway for help on this, they wanted to know who was the original purchaser of the scooter. So this is very important. So I want to say to you today, please get a copy of the original receipt if possible. Now, if you're buying a Segway, it could happen that if you're buying the scooter used and the person you're buying it from, for some reason, doesn't have a copy of the receipt or can't get a copy of the receipt, or they're not the original owner and they, they didn't think to ask or know to ask for a copy of the original receipt. If you buy that scooter, think of this. What will, what will you do if the controller goes out and you need Segway's help? Are you willing to have the limitations that may be, um, I guess, kind of imposed? I don't know if we say imposed, but kind of imposed. Would you, but, but would you be happy with a scooter with limitations, severe limitations, and maybe not working? Maybe. You have to check. Check on this. Before you buy a Segway, I would say call the company and ask them. Now, it may sound like a lot of trouble, but I think it's worth it because Segway's a really good company. They have great customer support. I've experienced them to be great. Um, they work really hard. They listen really well. Uh, they work. They seem to me. My impression of Segway and my experience of Segway is that they're very committed to quality, um, to good prices, and the engineering, electrical and mechanical engineering, is amazing. The way they run the company, the way they work, is they require that original receipt, a copy of it. Okay, it's okay. They're okay if you. My understanding is they're okay if you're not the first owner but they need that information on that first purchase, okay? Um, and that's just how it is right now at this time of making this video. 
uh, but please confirm this for yourself by contacting Segway and talk to them, and um, and then uh, make a video and share your experience, what your, what your knowledge is. So um, you can also make videos sharing what you think about that. Do you think that's a good idea? Do you think there's a better way to do it? Like you know, it, like maybe if there was some like online, like a website where we can where things can be updated and registered and. And it's just like a community. Uh, I don't know how that would work. I guess it would have to be something that the company runs, but where things could be easily uploaded and shared with them. I don't know. It's just an idea. But uh, maybe what Segway is saying is simple enough. Maybe that is a simple way. Um, uh, uh, but I'm just thinking, like, if there was a way that, that, like, a scooter could have, like, you create an account, and maybe this, I'm just totally coming up with this right now, and I don't know if it's a good idea or not. But let's say the scooter, when you first, when a, when a person buys a scooter, you register it with the company, right? Let's let me think this through. Upload a copy of the receipt, and then when you, any buyer that buys that same scooter after that, thereafter, maybe the name can be connected to that account somehow, and the account doesn't have like you know, it, 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 there would have to be like protection of privacy, right? Of course, but I'm just thinking, is there some way where it just helps it to be easier for people that are associated with that scooter that are connected to that scooter? where they can have it worked on more easily and have full access to the full features of the scooter um, as it relates to what we're talking about right now, right? We're talking about scooter being basically all the features being unlocked, all the features being accessible. And that's to any owner, any owner that comes that buys it used at a later date, right? Because um, so if I sell the scooter, I would have to make sure that I give my information, I mean my receipt, a copy of the receipt, to that next person and then they're protected as long as i give them a copy of the receipt they're protected that means that they can get the help of segway i'm not talking about warranty i'm talking about uh that segway if you buy their parts they can help you with it and to make sure it works you know like like for example the, the controller um let's say i out of warranty or let's say we're out of warranty right i just bought this so it's under warranty still but let's say i'm out of warranty and um, I, I I burn out the controller, right? If I burned out the motor controller, right? That's in here, I think. I think it's in here. If that burned out, I would buy a new one from Segway, and, and then I would call Segway and, and, and say, Segway, I got a new controller. Can you help me uh, make it communicate with the scooter? Because on this scooter, I don't think you can just put it in and plug it in and it works, okay? Uh, I'm going to call it a registration process. There's a process where and I don't know if that's the correct words for it, but it's where the where 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 everything's put in. Like Segway does something on the computer where it helps the the the, the scooter work correctly, right? Now I don't think that exists on this scooter right here, like the Wolf King GT Pro. I don't think that exists with this. I think it literally is just a is a uh, like a, a controller, and you put it in, and it works. That's it. This one's connected somehow. I think you know Segway can connect to the scooter. Uh, which amazes me. It's like very advanced. You ever, you ever had someone help you, uh, like in customer service with your computer at home, and they're they're like do they're working on the screen, you know they're they're moving around on the screen. That's how it feels to me. What's happening with the Segway? So this is like to me, it's very advanced, uh, and I, I'm just saying that's what it feels like. I'm not saying that they're actually you know accelerating and pulling the brake and stuff electronically, but maybe they could. I don't know. I don't know what they can and cannot do. I'm going to ask them the next time I call them. I'll ask them, what, what, what can you guys access on the scooter? I don't actually think, I think I'm completely wrong about what I just said. I don't think they can do that. But what I do know is that the controller, uh, Cameron, for example, I'll tell you exactly what happened. Okay, I, should, I shouldn't, I shouldn't uh, guess here. I'll just tell you what the experience we, we, we had was Cameron called, so that we were getting an error code on the GT1, right? On Cameron's scooter, we were getting an error code. So we contacted uh, Segway customer support and they immediately were helping Cameron get it going and, and connecting this the, that controller, or I'll call it registering that controller with the scooter, and um, and then uh, and then the error code went away and the scooter worked, so it was working. Now, how did they do that? I mean, I don't actually know. It's amazing. Maybe Cameron did it and they were just telling him what to do on his phone, right? Because I don't know how much Segway can actually access your actual scooter, but there's an account, and somehow with Cameron doing what they tell him to do between Cameron and customer support, they were able to get the scooter to work with the new controller, but it had limitations because Cameron 
was not the original purchaser and did not have a copy of the original receipt. So I think I've explained this a few different ways, or maybe I just repeated myself exactly like 15 times. Um, so hopefully that wasn't boring to you. But uh, if you've watched any of my videos, you're probably used to that by now, and so you probably stopped listening in the first couple of minutes if, you, if that's all you needed. But uh, maybe this is enjoyable for some of you to listen to me go on and on and on. Um, I, I think I enjoy it, so uh, thank you for being here, everyone. And I just uh, want to thank Segway for making such a great scooter, and I know they're doing their best, and I think they're doing a great job. So, uh, like I was saying before, make sure you get a receipt when you buy a used scooter. And as the seller of a scooter, be sure to give the person you're selling your, your, your Segway that you bought new, whatever that may be, whatever Segway that may be, give the person you're selling that scooter to a copy of the receipt to make their life easier if they ever have to repair it or if they ever sell the scooter. That scooter could be sold five times, right? It could be sold five times, and each person would benefit from having that original receipt. That is my understanding. So anyway, everyone, have a great day. Now, that might sound inconvenient and difficult, but I think that it's worth it because look what you're getting. You are getting a, a, a technological masterpiece here. I mean, look at the engineering of this scooter. I mean, let's see what happens when we turn this thing on. Look at this. Have you ever seen a scooter that turns on like this before? Look at this. I mean, this is just absolutely amazing. Look at that. Look at this. Look at this. Look at all this here. Let's turn the blinker on. Look at that blinker. And the blinker turns itself off. Watch. I'm going to push it. It blinks five times. And I, there was a gentleman on, on, on a video that said, I, so originally I thought, I think the blinkers used to blink three times originally. And then there's this video where so, a gentleman that loves engineering, right? They love it. Uh, and they love scooters and they love thinking about things. And they're aware of like what, you know, they're aware of what they like in a scooter. And they mentioned, I wish that the blinkers blinked five times. I don't know if they said they wished, but they said if it blinked five times, it would be helpful. This blinks five times now. <laughs> so did Segway listen to the to the customer? I mean, to the uh, the scooter lovers. Yes, you know. Look at the scooter; it's amazing. You can change those colors. <clears throat> One thing I would love to see with the scooter is a larger battery. The Segway GT2. A larger battery, it comes with a 15, this is the Segway GT2, and it comes with a 1512, 1512 watt hour battery. I would love to see a 3000 plus watt hour battery in there, and I would love to see more powerful chargers. These are two amp chargers each, okay? Two amps each, that's four amps. There's smaller scooters that Segway has, I'm calling them smaller, but they're older models. I, I can't think of the name of the model right now, but there's a five amp charger, and it says Segway on the charger. And this is from years ago for a different scooter, right? I'm thinking this is the biggest, most amazing, latest masterpiece from Segway. And I'm thinking I would love to have two 5-amp chargers right here, right? Or at least one 5-amp charger and then the one 2-amp charger, right? Because a lot of scooters, we can do that. We can run a fast charger and then the stock charger. We can run two at once, right? The fast charger and a stock charger, the one that ships with it. So I'd like to be, I'm, I, I want to do that with this. I want to run like a five amp charger and then a two amp charger. Or if Segway just goes next level, because this scooter is next level, I would like to charge with two five amp chargers. Or why not two 10 amp charger, right? How high can we go? So um, that's something that Segway knows, but I would love to be able to have at least one and possibly two fast chargers for this. And when I say fast charger, I mean more than the two amps. These are two amps each. So that's what I'm saying. More than the two amps that this is rated at. So our output is, let me turn the light back on so we can see. So as you can see here, see we're at output 57.8 volts, two amps. So when you run, running the two chargers is running the same voltage, but you're adding the amperage up. So it's four amps going in. These two chargers on this super scooter are less powerful than Segway's smaller scooter that has a fast charger, a 5 amp fast charger. So I'm like, 
I want to get a fast charger for this. I want at least the 5 amp charger, at least. I mean, preferably an 8 amp charger. And one 8 amp charger and then a 2 amp charger. That's charging at 10 amps. I would like that. Because right now it takes 8 hours to charge this. Anyway, everyone, I'm, I'm just saying that because I can't help but talk about that because it's important to me. But this video is about get a copy of the receipt from whoever you buy a used scooter from. And if you're the buyer and you're selling it to someone, think of that. Give a, give a receipt, a copy of the receipt to the, to the new owner so they, they'll, they won't have any complications if they ever have to work on the scooter and need Segway's uh, help with technical support. Have a great day, everyone. Talk to you later. Bye.